Well, hello, and welcome to session number 13 of FileMaker Group Therapy for Citizen Developers. My name is Tim Jones, and our topic for this session is custom menus. On the agenda for today, custom menus allow us to add, edit, and remove commands from the menus that appear on FileMaker's menu bar. We can edit existing menu commands and alter their functionality, making them perform our scripts. We can add or remove menu commands from the menus, even add or remove entire menus from the menu bar. You must be using FileMaker's advanced tools to be allowed to manage custom menus. In FileMaker 17 and above, use the preferences command to enable these advanced tools. In FileMaker 16 and earlier, you had to have purchased the advanced version of FileMaker Pro. The basic version does not include the ability to manage custom menus, though it will show custom menus in a database that has them. We can install custom menu sets in three ways in our FileMaker solutions. The manage custom menus command lets us specify the default menu set for the whole database, that is every layout. The layout setup dialog box lets us install a menu set for one specific layout. And we can use the install menu set script step to activate a menu set. Now there's also a setting in the manage security context, particular to each privilege set that affects available menu commands. The choices are all, editing only, and minimum. But since we have no ability to customize these menu sets, we're not going to include this feature in today's discussion. Before we dive in, we must become familiar with the terminology of menu sets. I'm sure you recognize this hierarchy as some of the menus found in FileMaker's standard menu set. There's the file menu, the edit menu, the view menu, the records menu, and some of the menu items and submenus beneath. So with that as a model, a menu set is a collection of menus. A menu is a collection of menu items and or submenus. A submenu is a collection of menu items. And a menu item is a command that performs a script or built in action. Now, let's look at those four terms again, now that we see how they relate to each other. Starting at the bottom, a menu item is a command that performs a script or built in action. A menu item can appear on either a submenu or on a menu. And a menu set is a collection of those menus. You'll use these four terms extensively as you develop custom menus in your FileMaker apps. So keep this image in your mind or screenshot it now. The key to successfully customizing menus in your FileMaker solution is to work from the bottom up. Okay, work from the bottom up. Start by writing your scripts, which you will eventually assign to menu items. Then create your sub menus and add menu items to them. Next, create your menus and add some sub menus and or menu items to them. Once all your menus are ready, you can create your menu set or sets. Lastly, of course, you'll specify where or when a menu set should be installed. To demonstrate custom menus, Let's say we want to, in our animal care database that we've been building in these webinars, in these sessions, we wanna take control of two critical menu commands with which users can do great good or great harm. They are new record and delete record. We're trying to prevent users from carelessly creating and deleting records. And so we wanna script out those two processes to get greater control. Let's start by writing a delete record script. I'll jump into the FileMaker database, open the script workspace, 
and we'll duplicate our script template by right clicking on the script template and choosing duplicate. Let's call this new script delete current record. And then because we're going to expect an incoming script parameter, I'm going to append a little parenthetical to the end of the name to remind me anytime I call this script, I want to pass in the name of the table from which we want to delete the record. For the comments up at the top, we'll set the purpose or describe the purpose of this script as allow users with sufficient privileges to delete the current record. And no, we're not going to be talking about privileges during this session. That'll have to be a future session. This script will be called by the custom menu item that we're going to be creating in this session called delete record. And for the expected parameter or parameters, we'll say that we need this script to receive in the form of a script parameter, the name of the table from which to delete. <clears throat> As standard protocol, we're going to call our script startup script. You'll probably recall from an earlier session, script startup simply sets the error capture to on, turns the ability for users to bail out of a script off, and closes any popover panels that might be open. We'll hit return a couple of times, move down to line seven. And here we will capture in a variable using the set variable script step in a variable named table, we'll capture the incoming script parameter using that get script parameter function. Then return return at line nine here. And no, you don't have to skip lines in your scripts. I just think it makes the code nicer to look at. We'll add a show custom dialog script step, SCD, hit return, hit the space bar. And in the show custom dialog options, let's give this dialog box a title of delete space. And then let's say we want the name of the table that they just passed in. Hey, we just grabbed the name of the table that they passed in in the script parameter and we stored it in a variable called dollar sign table. So we'll append or concatenate that variable value dollar sign table. But you'll recall perhaps that our table names are um, in all capitals. So let's say that we wrap that table variable into the proper function or inside the proper function, which will convert its caseness to initial capital letter. The proper function, like the lower function and the upper function, which convert text to lowercase and uppercase respectively, the proper function uh, results in the text that you feed it, but in proper case, that is initial capital letters, the first letter of each word capitalized. For the body of the message, we'll warn them saying, this will permanently and irretrievably trying to get the message across that they should not carelessly delete records, delete the current space quote. And then we'll again, tack on the name of that table. So if they're calling this script from the context of, the, of an animal layout, it will say delete animal for the title. This will permanently and irretrievably delete the current animal or customer or visit or vet or wherever they are. This time though, we want to use the lower function so that it appears the table name appears in all lowercase. And we'll tack on an ending punctuation mark as well. For the buttons, let's make the default button cancel and button number two will be okay because deleting a record is not something that they should do lightly. And so if they if they simply uh, don't read the prompt and they just bang on the enter key, we would want that enter key to trigger the cancel option rather than the okay option. Whenever you write a script that does something potentially that the user would regret, make your default button the safer of the options. All right, we'll say okay here, hit return. 
and then we'll use an if statement to find out which button they clicked, the if script step. And we find out what button the user clicked in the most recently displayed custom dialog box by using the get last message choice function. Let's check to see if they clicked button number two. Now, button number two, you'll, re you'll recall, was our OK button, right? But so that I don't have to continually refer back to the show custom dialog script step, I like to build in a little comment at the end of my if statement saying, if they clicked button number two, it means they clicked the OK button. So two forward slashes is how you add a comment onto a line of calculation code. Different than the comment uh, tag in the scripting language, this is in calculations. Forward slash, forward slash, turns the rest of that line into a comment. All right, so if they clicked button number two, then we'll go ahead and issue the delete record dr script step. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the with dialog switch on so that the user will get another prompt just to make sure they really want to delete this record. They'll see our dialog saying, hey, this is going to this is permanent. This is serious. If they say OK to that, then they'll get another dialog that's the system dialog message of, are you sure you want to delete this record? All right, I'll save the script. Now let's create our, or let's write our create record script. This one's going to be so similar. And let me put this down where I want it in the data manipulation folder. This uh, create record script is going to be so similar to the delete current record script that I'll simply duplicate it and then make the necessary changes. Let's call this one create new record. And we will also name it in such a way as to remind ourselves that it's going to expect an incoming parameter of the name of the table in which to create the new record. The purpose of this script will be to create new record in table specified by script parameter. This will be called by the custom menu item of add record. And the expected parameter will be the same. We expect the name of the table from which, well, not from which to delete, but in which to create the new record. OK, at line five, we call our startup script. At line seven, we'll grab the value of the incoming script parameter and tuck it away into a variable called dollar sign table. At line nine, we'll show them a custom dialog box. But this time, as I double clicked on that statement, instead of delete, let's say create and then the name of the table. So if it's uh, animal or customer or any one of our tables in this animal care system. And then for the message, we'll go something like this. We'll say, are you sure you want to create a new, and then in lowercase letters, the name of the table. So are you sure you want to create a new animal? Are you sure you want to create a new uh, customer or something like that? And then uh, record, and we'll end it with a question mark. This time, since creating records is not nearly as risky as deleting records, we'll reverse the positions of our buttons, making the OK button the default. Okay. Say OK there. And once again, we'll uh, check to see which button they clicked. This time, if they clicked button number two, though, that means they clicked cancel. OK. And if they did click cancel, then we would want to actually just exit out of the script. We wouldn't want to delete a record, of course. I'll delete that step, hitting the delete key on the keyboard. We would just want to exit out of this script. If they clicked cancel, it means, oh, I didn't mean to do this. And let's just get them out of the script altogether. Below that then, below that whole if block, we'll continue on with what we want to do. If they didn't click cancel, they must have clicked OK. That was the only other option they had to dismiss that dialog box. And so we would want to navigate them over to the, um, the appropriate layout. Now, we've got layouts. Let me show you the 
manage layouts window, we've got layouts for every one of the tables in our system, at least the user facing tables that are in the list view and others that are in the form view. For creating a record, form view would definitely be preferred. Notice, right, material form, order form, room form, service form, and so forth. And they all follow a consistent naming convention or naming pattern of the name of the table, then an underscore, then the name of the view, form or list, then an underscore, and then the device name that that layout is designed for, desktop or iPad or iPhone. Now I haven't added all of the form and list layouts for the iPad and iPhone layouts. I do have the desktop ones and that will suffice for our purposes today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call that navigation script that we built in an earlier session, our go to layout script. So I'll use the perform script, PS, perform script, script step to call our go to layout script step, sorry, go to layout script, and we'll pass in the two pieces of information that it needs, the name of the table that we want them to be taken to, and the name of the view. That's what our layouts need, table, view, and then device. Well, device we have stored in a global variable that our startup script grabbed. Now to make it easy to parse the, uh, the information that I'm passing into this script, we'll pass it in as a value list. So I'll use the list function there to pass in these two pieces of information. First of all, the table that we want to send them to, and a semicolon, and then the word form, okay? Because we want to take them to, for example, animal form desktop or customer form desktop. This will create a list out of those two pieces of information, the name of the table that we want to create the new record in and the word form. And that's what this go to layout script needs. In a later session, we'll talk about um, making a sophisticated navigation scheme, but this is really the crux of it all, having one single script that handles all of your navigation. After we get them to the right form style layout, then of course, we'll make the new record that they're trying to make with our new record script step. Let me save that script. And so we've got our two scripts. Keep in mind that with this approach to navigation, by the way, if we were to ever rename any of these layouts, then this go to layout script would fail. It would break, so to speak, because um, the, the, the names wouldn't match up. Well, but that's true in any programming environment where we have to refer to something by name. Programmers use object names very precisely, very intentionally, and they don't go about renaming things willy nilly. Now, also, if you're wondering why in each of these two scripts, I chose to grab the table name from a script parameter rather than just from using the get layout table name function for example, here in this statement, it's because using the script parameter approach gives us the flexibility to call these scripts from more places. We'll be able to trigger these scripts from buttons in portal rows or from a dashboard layout, for example, rather than only from a layout that's based on the same table on which we wanna work. Now that we've written our scripts, Let's associate them with the new record and delete record commands on the menu bar. When you want to install a custom menu, you must install an entire menu set. That is all the menus on the menu bar. You can't just cook up a custom records menu and slip it into the standard FileMaker menus set. You see menus get installed onto the menu bar as sets and a menu set, you'll recall from that graphic earlier, is a collection of menus like file, edit, view, insert, and all the rest. So let's go build some menus. Then we'll collect them into a menu set. Now there are several ways that we could get into the manage custom menus dialog box. We can come here, file, manage, custom menus, or we could use the tools menu. 
and down to custom menus and over to manage custom menus. Here we find two tabs, custom menu sets and custom menus. On the custom menu sets tab, we see the one menu set that comes with every FileMaker database automatically. The standard FileMakers, the standard FileMaker menus set. It cannot be edited, duplicated, or deleted, and it's currently the default menu set for this file. But remember, our goal, our technique is to work from small to big with menu sets at the very last. So let's build our menus. On the custom menus tab, we'll click create to make a copy of each of the standard menus, starting with the FileMaker Pro menu. That's the first menu that we see, at least in the Mac version of FileMaker. And we're gonna create a copy of this standard FileMaker Pro menu. By the way, this FileMaker Pro menu is set to only appear when not on the Windows platform. That's what this if statement here is doing. System platform of two is Windows. So they're saying, if the system platform is not to then show this FileMaker Pro menu. Kind of clever. Obviously the Windows version doesn't use that menu. All right, then we'll create another one and we'll go to the file menu this time and make a copy of it. And giving it the menu name of file copy will be fine. The menu name and the menu title are different as we'll discuss later on. Okay, next comes the edit menu. Then comes the view menu. And I'm just looking across the top here so I get these in the right order. They're listed here alphabetically, not in their traditional order from left to right. Okay, view copy, that's fine. Then comes insert, there we go. After insert comes format, but we don't see the format menu here. I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's go on to records, which is the next one. Now records is the one that we do want to customize. And so I'm gonna give it a slightly different name than the others, just as a reminder that we have made some customizations to it. And we'll come in later and deal with all of this good stuff. Now, the records menu changes into the requests menu when you're in find mode. And so let's add a copy of the requests menu as well so that when our users go to find mode, they'll have a natural looking occurrence of the requests menu. Okay, And then we're looking for scripts, tools, window. We won't find any of them. You don't find scripts or tools or window at all available here, okay? Now, in addition to the format menu, so we see that um, four menus, four of the traditional menus, we don't have a way of uh, producing them just yet, but we'll see shortly that um, how we can include at least three of those four in our menu set, okay? Uh, the tools menu, by the way, is off limits. We have no control over the tools menu in our custom menus. But we do have our last one, the help menu. So we'll round out our, uh, our collection of copies of the menus with help. And now we've got the eight menus that we can create here. We've got copies of them. Now that we've got these menus, let's assemble them into a menu set. On the custom menu sets tab, I'll click create and I'll give this menu set the name animal care menu set. And then I'll click add to start adding menus to it. In the select menu dialog box, we see many pre-built menus, including three of the four that were missing a moment ago, format, script, and window, right? Format, scripts, and window were three of the four that we couldn't get to. And I already told you that tools is off limits. We have no, no access to that. We also see some of the submenus that are familiar to us from our work in FileMaker itself. These appear on FileMaker's standard menu set. And then down at the bottom, we see our custom menus. 
There's our FileMaker Pro copy all the way through help copy. It'll do a shift click to select all eight of those and we'll add them into our animal care menu set. Then we'll add in those missing three format through window. Now I could have done all 11 of them in one go, but I just wanted to make a point of showing you where the custom menus were versus where some of these built-in ones are. Notice that the help menu automatically stays at the end. It has to be the last menu, the rightmost menu on the menu bar. Also, the format menu is traditionally placed before the records menu. So I'll just drag it up above records. All right, and we'll say okay. And now we've got our own custom menu set complete with all of the standard menus or copies of them. To install this animal care menu set as the default menu set for this file, we simply choose animal care menu set from this drop down menu. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, as I wander around in the database going from layout to layout, you won't see any anything new or different about the menus because we haven't customized any of them yet. But just wait, we've laid the foundation. All the pieces are in place. Okay, let's get back into the manage custom menus command and onto the custom menus tab. And let's start to edit this records custom menu. I could double click on it as a shortcut to get into editing it. This is where the fun begins. All right, the menu name, Records Custom, is just the name that we use for this menu internally. No one sees this name but us. The menu title, however, currently Records, we can override either with a static value or a formula. I'm gonna click Specify to write a formula that will result in the name of the table the user is currently in, and we'll use the get layout table name function for that, right? Get layout table name. And again, you'll recall that our table names are written in all caps and they're written in a singular, not a plural form. So let's wrap this function inside the, or, or yeah, let's wrap this function inside the proper function so that we'll get initial capital only and all the rest of the word lowercase. And likewise, let's append or concatenate an S to the end. So it will give us um, uh, you know, animals or visits or uh, customers in good proper case. So that's the menu title, okay? Now we'll just do that much for now, just changing the, the title of our records menu to use the current layout table name in proper case with an S on the end of it. We'll say, okay, and okay, and look at that. I'm in a layout that's based on the animal table. We can see that here from the name of the layout and the, the records menu title has changed to animals. Likewise, as we navigate to customers, the records menu changes to the customers menu, visits to the visits menu, vendors to the vendors menu. Fantastic. I love it, so dynamic. But the menu items still say record, right? We've still got new record, duplicate record, delete record, delete all records, sort records, and so on. Well, we can change that too. Let's rename them, those menu items, in the same way. While we're at it, changing the action of the new record and delete record commands to run our custom scripts. So we'll edit our custom version of the records menu again. I'm gonna start by clicking onto this first menu item, new record. We can see that this menu item is a command rather than a submenu or a separator. Separators, by the way, are just these decorative lines that kind of divide the groups of menu items. And okay. we can add separators as desired to make the menu look more attractive. 
Next, we see that this new record command is based on an existing command, particularly the new record command, that the, the built-in FileMaker command, new record. If we, if we leave it as such, then the new record button on the status toolbar will likewise be altered as we modify the corresponding menu item. Let's say we want this, uh, this menu item to read new animal or new customer dot dot dot. So we'll customize the item name. We can do that either again with a static value or with a formula. And we'll use a formula very similar to what we used before for the menu title itself. We'll say new and then we'll concatenate on in proper case the name of the current layout table that the user is in. So this would say something like new animal or new customer. And then because the, uh, the new command that we're going to customize is going to present a dialog box, standard convention says that you should put an ellipsis or three dots at the end of any commands on the menus that are going to show a dialog box. So we'll concatenate the ellipsis there. Okay? And I know I'm going to use a lot of this in several other occasions. So I'll go ahead and copy that much so that I can paste it in at the appropriate times later. I love how the, uh, the menu item changes immediately, right? We see new animal dot, dot, dot for the item name. Next, oh, and it uses, by the way, whatever layout is open in the background, okay? Next, keyboard shortcut, command N. That's still going to be intact. I won't check it if I want to leave the same default keyboard shortcut in place. If we wanted to customize it, then of course we'd check that box. For the action, I'll go ahead and check the action checkbox and perform script is already assumed. So we'll just select the script to create new records and we'll pass in the name of the table that is assigned to or that the current layout is based on. Again, using that get layout table name function. Excellent. So it'll figure out what table the user is in and it will change the name of this menu item to match that. Or sorry, it'll, it'll send in the, the, the appropriate table name into our script, sorry. All right, this is great. Everything's dynamic for us. Now, let's change the name of every menu command that has the word record to animal or customer or vendor or whatever they're in. So duplicate record. I'll change the item name, getting rid of that and adding in, pasting in that. Duplicate record doesn't show a dialog box. So we'll say, have it say duplicate animal without the three dots. Delete record, we'll make it say delete animal. Pasting in that much and it will show a dialog box. So we'll leave the three dots, that looks great. And this was the other script step to which we had written or for which we had written a custom script. So let's give it the action of performing our delete record script. Passing in once again, the name of the table that the current layout is based on. Ah, there we go. That get layout table name function. Fantastic. Okay, delete all records. Let's make that say delete all animals. We'll delete that much and paste in and we'll add in an S right there in front of the dots. So we literally get plural version, delete all animals. Go to record, huh? should be go to animal. And without the three dots there, show all records, show all animals. Ah, I can't stop myself. This is just too fun, all right? Show all, and let's put an S at the end of that one like so. So show all animals. Show omitted only, all right, we'll leave that one. Omit record, ha, huh? omit animal. Somebody stop me. And that one doesn't show a dialog box, so we'll get rid of the three dots. And lastly, sort records, we'll call it sort animals 
instead there and we'll stick an S in front of the dot so we get sort animals. All right, fantastic. So we've customized the names of a lot of these commands under the records menu and given two of them custom actions to perform. I'll say okay. And let's go and see what we've done. Here I am in an animal based layout. And so the animals menu says new animal, duplicate animal, delete animal, delete all animals, go to animal, show all animals or show omitted only, omit the current animal. I'll do that. Show all animals, omit multiple animals, right? Let's say we will omit three more. Love it. Even the buttons on the status toolbar have changed their labels accordingly. New animal, delete animal, show all animals, sort animals. Ah, oh, this is just too cool. Right now, the dialog boxes don't rename themselves, of course, because that that bit is baked into FileMaker, but the commands that we use to access them are and our scripts are run if we choose the two commands like uh, of new animal and delete animal. I'll choose new animal and this is definitely our script running because when you make a new record, it doesn't ask you, are you sure? So this is definitely our script running. We'll cancel that. Likewise delete animal comes up with our permanently and irretrievably warning nice even the buttons run our scripts new animal runs our new animal script or new record script i should say and delete animal right the messaging in the in the dialog boxes are personalized what if i'm on customers then it all changes immediately new customer duplicate customer delete customer fantastic Likewise, the buttons on the status toolbar, show all customers, new customer, delete customer, okay? And if I were to hit new customer, runs the script, I'll go ahead and say, okay, it should navigate us to the customer form layout where we can then add in a new customer. Okay, that's fantastic. What if I go to the, um, the home layout? Now our home layout is based on the Z utility table, which is generally speaking, a, uh, not a user facing table, right? Uh, because this home layout is eventually gonna become more like a, a main menu uh, or a dashboard style layout. And it really doesn't make sense to have the records menu change into the Z utilities menu on the menu bar, because users are <laughs> not going to know what in the world this means, nor would we want them to be able to uh, make new Z utility records or think that they are. So let's change this one layout to use the standard menu set. Now to do so, we need to get into the layout setup dialog box for this home menu desktop layout. Okay, of course we could get there from layout mode, going into layout mode here and using the layout setup command or clicking the pencil icon shortcut to get into layout setup. But the manage layouts window works so surpassingly well here that I wanna show you that technique instead. In manage layouts, it shows you what menu set is assigned to each layout. And so at a glance, you can see which layouts are using which menu sets. And if you wanna change one, you simply double click on that layout, which opens up the layout setup dialog box for the layout you double clicked on, and you can change the menu set. Let's make this one layout, go back to using the standard FileMaker menus menu set. We'll say, okay, and there we go. So I love the manage layouts command in that it allows us to see at a glance which menu sets are in use by which layouts. All right, we'll close manage layouts and we'll exit out of layout mode to go back to browse. And now when we're in this home menu desktop layout, the FileMaker menu set, the FileMaker standard menus are here, which of course have the, uh, or has the, the traditional records menu. Let me go over here to visits and we see that 
our menu set has been installed when we changed to that layout because it's the file default. All the layouts are using that file default layout. Even the form style layouts. Let's um, let's jump into the details of one of these visit records. And there we go. We still get our custom menu with all of its custom commands. In our previous sessions, session numbers eight and nine and 10, we built a treatment invoice layout using subsummary parts, and we scripted out the steps to generate that report. I'll run it now as a reminder. And there's our nice looking subsummary report for the invoice for the current visit by Bubbles. Fantastic. Now, the, uh, the way that we provided so far for our users to run that script is by including a, a menu bar, or sorry, a button bar with a popover button on it here. And in that popover button, we put another button bar vertically oriented this time that we filled or can fill with buttons that do various things. Now, that's a great interface. It's a, it's a really effective and uh, easily understood interface for, for users. However, let's say you don't want to use uh, button bars and popover buttons with other nested button bars. You want to use the menus for this. Well, here's how you could do it. First, we'll go back into our custom menus command. And in the custom menus tab, let's create a new menu from scratch, clicking create, clicking start with an empty menu, and we'll say OK, and we'll call it reports. Okay. Now again, the menu name is just what we call it internally. The menu title, let's also call it reports because that's how it's going to appear to the end users. Okay. And we'll add a menu item, Click, clicking create to create a menu item. This menu item will be a command, not a submenu. It will not be based on an existing command. And we'll give it the name of treatment invoice. Okay. We don't need a keyboard shortcut for it, but we do need to assign it an action. So we'll assign it the action of running the script that generates that treatment invoice report, which I have down here in the reporting script folder. Now this script expects an incoming parameter of the file name that we want to give to the PDF. I have the text of that file name over here in another window and I'll just copy and paste it in like so. You can see that it's simply going to give us the text invoice for treatment of and then the name of the animal who was treated on, and then the date of the visit. All right, so that's the script that will be triggered by this treatment invoice menu item. We'll go ahead and say, okay, there. And so that gives us a menu. We could add that to a menu set like any other menu, or we could use it as a sub menu under one of the existing menus. Let's say we want reports to be a sub menu on the view menu. So we'll duplicate the view menu and then edit it, calling it view with reports. Okay. And then we'll create a new menu item, clicking create. It appears at the bottom, but we'll drag it up where we want it to go, maybe just up here above go to layout. This is not going to be a command. This is going to be a submenu. And then we get to specify which submenu we want to have go in this position of this view with reports menu. I'll click specify and go and choose that reports menu that we just cooked up a moment ago. And select. And then let's say we wanted a separator after reports. We'll create a new menu item and make it a separator like so. And so now reports is sandwiched between two separators like go to layout is sandwiched between two separators. That might look pretty nice. All right, we'll say okay there. <clears throat> now, 
remember, we only want this view with reports menu to appear on the visit form layout, which means we need a what? A whole new menu set. That's right. Menus get installed in sets. Fortunately, we can reuse all those menus that we created for the animal care menu set in this new visits menu set. So I'll head over to custom menu sets, select the custom menu set we made earlier and duplicate it. And it will reuse all those same menus. And then we'll just go in and edit it. We'll call this one visits menu set. And we'll select the old view menu and remove it. And then we'll add in our new view with reports menu there and drop it in place between edit and insert where the view menu traditionally belongs. We'll say OK and OK again. And then we'll go and install that visits menu set onto this one layout. I'll do it in layout mode so that you can see that approach getting into the layout setup dialog box with this pencil. We'll say use the visits menu set whenever the user is on this one layout. Okay, exit layout mode, save the changes and look at the view menu now. It's got our custom reports menu on it with the sub menu choice or with the menu item of treatment invoice. And when I choose it, it runs our report, runs our script beautifully. But if we're on any other layout, the view menu does not have that reports command. Fantastic. Only this one visits form layout gets the custom menu set that includes the custom view menu that has the custom sub menu on it. All right. Fantastic. Very nice. Okay. Are there any questions about creating and installing custom menus.